So, so the, the, the fundamental thing that is very necessary as the main message I have for you today about pitching is really starting with an interesting and exciting vision. And before delving into what I need to share with you about pitching, I'm actually going to pitch to you the startup that I'm working on. The startup that I'm working on is called Best Cash. And the idea behind it is that every dollar in our pocket is not exactly like every other dollar that's in our pocket. In the sense that there is one dollar that we can get a lot of value for, and there's another dollar that we're not really getting as much value for. And most of the most of the current financial services products were built from the standpoint of helping the bank make money. Best cash is essentially focusing on how can we make sure that everything that happens in your financial life is coming from the standpoint of what, what value it brings to you. Most fintechs, which are basically startup companies that are in the financial services industry, most of them are focusing on how can we help you save pennies. Some of them basically say, you go spend a dollar, if it is two cents that are left over, we'll put them for you in a savings account. And it's amazing how much funding some of these companies get. I am, however, focusing more on the dollars that you can save when you are getting back miles, cash back and points, when you're spending money on an everyday basis. But there is much bigger money on the very far right, which has to do with all the loans that you have in your portfolio. You have loans and you have insurances in each one of these products. No one ever calls you back to tell you that now your financial picture is much better and you deserve a better interest rate. That's what Best Cash is going to do. It's going to essentially stand right next to you, look at your financial portfolio, and every single day, 365 days a year, figure a way to help you bring in a much better mortgage, a much better loan, a much better insurance, because we're doing the searching automatically and proactively for you. So the vision I have is for a financial service industry that is proactive, from the standpoint of helping you and me and everyone else who has a financial product to continue to optimize that product. When I go get a car loan and I get hit by an 11% interest rate because I don't have a job or my FICO score is not so good, what happens six months later when I get a job and my FICO score is much better? The guy that sold me the car, and the car loan is never going to call me back. What Best Cash essentially says we need to look for the value in every product we have and we need to do that very proactively. And that's why I have the quotation here from the founder of Nike, belief is irresistible. A very big component of us pitching any idea, it has to come from a very strong belief that there is a God darn it better way of doing something. And that's really what drives the passion that when you finish that sentence, did you know? Did you know that there's so many millions of dollars in the system that we can unlock? Can you imagine what will happen? And that's why I have, very much like you, I have very high expectation of the financial services industry because there's so much value of dollars, hard dollars, that we can unlock. Could you imagine what, what that would mean for research, cancer research? Just one. Can you imagine what that would mean for all the homeless people in San Francisco or anywhere else in the world? It just blows my mind. And that's why my, my mantra is use best cash, invest the difference. Forget the pennies. There are billions of dollars in the system that are unlocked or sitting in the big pockets of big banks and big mortgages. And our very first promise is best cash puts an extra $10,000 in your pocket per year. And now you know, I'm not just talking about the $10,000. I'm talking about the 80 to 100 to 150 that I can save on a mortgage over the life of time of that lifetime of that mortgage. Every house we mortgage, we end up paying the same equivalent value of that house in interest payments. If you were to buy a house for $500,000 by the time you pay it off, it's probably going to cost you another $500,000. Most people walk around not knowing that, and that's really the passion that I have behind best cash. So that's how I look at it. And I love this American uh, analogy. You can run a Mack truck through it, 
Can you imagine this Mack truck carrying a Tesla, another home that you can get, and a graduation for your daughter? This is how much money is in the system, and I'm basically talking about your system. The insurance products you have, the mortgages you have, the car loans you have. If we optimize it into lower interest rates and lower premiums, we have money every month that we can put somewhere else. That is, ladies and gentlemen, is the essence of us coming up with something that we want to be so passionate about pitching and create emotion in ourselves and other people. Pitching, in my mind, is for you to really figure a way to create emotion inside of you first, so that those investors sitting in the room will be able to pick up on that emotion and be able to support you. This is the vision I have. If you have existing products, you will get messages on your phone every morning or whenever we find a fantastic new loan where basically you have a new car loan offer and you double click to view the details and you find the premium that you're paying on a monthly basis on the existing loan and a much better loan that we were able to find. So we're essentially making use of all that data analytics they're talking about, all that AI they're talking about, but we're putting it to use for ourselves. And if you don't have any of these products and you tell me, hey Ash, I'm getting married, I'm going to go buy a house, we do all the homework for you. You know what everybody else is doing right now? They are giving you the runaround. Any website out there now, they want you to fill out a form and then a hundred brokers will call you to sell you the mortgage product. Not from the vantage point of serving you, it's from the vantage point of, of oh my God, we're going to make a commission here. Flip the thought process and that's what the best cash is all about. So that basically takes us back to how do we pitch, right? Uh, and by the way, if you want to know when Best Cash is available in the market, bestcash.us for you to put your email address in and be one of the very first people to start really uh, capturing those gains. Now, when I thought about coming and talking to you about how to pitch, the issue is the internet is full of content on the topic and very much if we follow this list of topic areas, we'll cover everything we need to cover. But the one thing that I'm basically saying is fundamentally a whole lot more important is not the slide deck. It's not the slide deck. It's the energy you're going to bring to that conversation. And that energy, as Sunil was talking about, that energy is going to come from you finding a vision of an incredible future. What I showed you about Best Cash, I personally can't wait. I can't wait. I cannot wait to get a better loan on the mortgage, on the car, whenever that's, a, that's available. It's basically like a wheel of fortune. Every single day, it's churning the numbers, it's churning the numbers, it's looking at my pocket, it's looking my, on my income level, my debt, my debt to income ratio, and finding me the best products that exist in the marketplace. Without me going to nerd wallet and filling out a form and just wasting so much time. And at the very end, I'm still lost. You see the point? Do you guys agree with what I'm talking about? I know it sounds like a dream right now. It is. It actually is a dream. And I think whenever we want to pitch, if we're not going to pitch a dream, we shouldn't. Because we're not going to be so passionate about it. And therefore, the investors are going to be sitting and wondering, I don't think we're going to be able to make that much money. Right? So it's very important for us to come up with a big dream. So this is the content that's needed. And we all pretty much know you have to start with what's the pain or what is the gain that we're going to get out of it, what is the product or the solution that we're building, you know, how much customer traction do we have now versus the future, uh, what's the business model, how we're going to make money, uh, how much money do we need and how are we going to use the money on what kind of a timeline, and um, what does it mean for the investors to invest in the company, what's the timeline for actually turning their investment into profits for them and for other people. So the question is, how do we, how do we then um, really get that emotional firepower that we need? Because I gotta fire these people up in the room. If I don't get them fired up, I'm not gonna get an investment, guarantee. So that's the most important thing for us to do. In order for us to fire them up, we have to fire ourselves up, and that's why it's very important to do the research. Sometimes it might take years and years. And years. Years. I remember working on startups during the dot-com era. I'm going to age myself. But we were basically running through a number of ideas. Whether it's 
MP3 players or something else. There was a lot of stuff that was going on. And now, there are some sectors that are ripe for innovation. Fintechs are now, there are basically thousands of fintechs right now. Financial services, because of the open APIs, a lot of people are jumping into that space. Healthcare is another one. Of course, pharmaceutical is happening. You know, for a long time that's been the case. Uh, clean, uh, clean energy, of course, autom automation, connecting automation and thinking about safety and so on. So the question is, how do we fire them up? And I think I give you a clue. And firing them up is really in the delta. And by the delta, we basically mean the tension that exists between what we have now and what we could possibly have how the mortgage industry is serving now and what could possibly happen with best cash. All those data analytic systems are serving the banks. We want to turn these analytic systems around so that they act as that wheel of fortune every night, churning the numbers and if they have a better product for me to use, I will get to know about it. So, in order for us to get that emotion, we have to look for an opportunity that is big enough to create so much tension between what exists today and what exists in the future. So what happens in the bottom, in the middle of that, in the middle of that triangle, you, may, you might want to draw it down, because I'm going to give you some words to plug in. In the middle of that triangle is an amazing amount of excitement that is emanating from that tension. Does that make sense? It's an incredible amount of excitement that is emanating from that tension that exists. And then the way we then divide that excitement, it's we, we essentially, number one, have to be very excited about the end user. I am blown away with excitement with people who use best cash because of the savings. Imagine if a family man who only has one car and has to wait at home for his wife to come pick him up or the other way around because they don't have enough money to buy another car. And if we're able to unlock money in that car loan, that they could possibly buy another car. Because in America, a lot of the time, you need to have that down payment to get going. And then things start going. And that's why the excitement lies, one side of that triangle is the end user. You want to get excited very much about that end user. You also want to get very excited about that investor. What are they getting at? And of course, the third leg of that stool is you. The engine that's powering it all up is the excitement that you have been able to find. Whether and how many lives you're going to be able to save, right? It's incredible. I mean, we need something. Now and every, with all these, all these cars that happened this week, it is very sad that someone died because uh, of, of a car that a driver was. So definitely there's a lot, there's a lot of room for a lot of ideas and I think that's really why it's very important for us to identify what that data is. Uh, a lot of the time you find us as entrepreneurs, we pivot a lot. Sometimes you start with one idea and you continue to modulate that idea and tweak it and that's absolutely fine. I started Best Cash Me about two years ago. Where the product vision is now is different from what I, when I, when I started. But you have to have the right intention. The right intention for me is to unlock all this much money. Yes, I can make a lot of money in the process, but if I don't unlock that money, there ain't any money for me. Right? So that's why when I talk to investors, there's a potential for them to get so many multiples. But we got to serve that customer first. If we don't serve that customer, we're not going to get the traction. So far, so good? Yeah? So I think, you know, there are only, only a few more ideas here, which really talk to the fact that whenever we're talking, as Sunil was talking about, that audience that we're trying to talk to, there is something on their mind. If it's the investor, they want to figure out how we're going to make money. What is the certainty level in what we're hearing? This book by one of, one of the guys that shows up a lot on CNN, uh, Philip Mudd, the main point he's basically talking about is the fact that it's always a hate game. You have to talk to the questions that are top of mind for that individual. If you see there is a particular weakness area, bring it all the way up yourself because they are sitting there thinking about it. Right? So of course all the diff all the different standard elements of content will have them covered, but you gotta figure out what are the top three to five questions on their mind and talk to them. And that's what a marketer will also tell you, that you're really trying to talk to the conversation that's already in their head. Make sense? And that's what this is all about.
and, and we, we essentially need to think about the old game, and then that's why I basically said, you know what, you want pitch, you want to know, you want pitch templates, the internet's full of them. But that energy I'm talking about is not easy to really bring about. And that's why we need to find out what is the tension that we are talking about, what is the solution we're trying to solve for, and get so fired up before you walk into that room, that when you start talking to them, and you make them feel like what it's really going to be like when this solution comes to market, they would be like, we better give this guy a check. Make sense? Because you fire them up so much that there is tension in the room where you create a sense of urgency and a sense of the fear of missing out. If they miss out on this opportunity, they are going to miss out a lot. And VCs every day are sitting looking for opportunities to fund because the money sitting in the bank, the, the money sitting in the bank is not serving them. Their job is to find opportunities. We need to find winning horses. Winning job is to put the money on. And that's how they generate value for the funds that they are managing. Without finding these opportunities, they are actually not getting their job done. So you need to make it easy for them by fighting them up in a way that says, this is a deal we do not want to let go, which is we want to make sure every feature in it is about driving value for you and me. Thank you so much for your time.